Okay. Well, then I'll call the meeting to order at 7.04. Um, has everybody had a chance to read the agenda? Yes. A approval? I move to approve. I can second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Uh, and I presume you've all had a chance to read the minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Motion to approve. I can motion to approve. Second. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Okay, public discussion. Hello there. Hi. Hi. I am sitting in the car in a gymnast parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is usually Mike's job, but he can't drive yet. Mm. Bummer. Okay, so the only public comment I have to make is I talked to Allie about book boxes. And because Mike came home with the front to the purple lions one that Morrison Lumber put new plexiglass in it. And he asked me where it was and if he could get it to install it. So that kind of reopened that case again. And as Allie and I talked and she talked to Nick, uh, Nick's not in favor of putting them back in the parks. Um, besides being destroyed, they um, aren't in good shape. And I don't know, Allie, did you ever find any that were whole? No, um, we have one here that has not been, had never been put out yet. Um, it was uh -huh. a replacement um, for, I think it was for the one here at the library, but we did take that one down, I think at the beginning of the pandemic because people were using it as a drop box. So we were having issues with not being able to find materials because somebody had put them in, in the little free library instead. Um, yeah, Nick says that the only one that is still standing currently is the one in Rendezvous, which is maintained by the Rotary. It is currently um, damaged. Um, and they did come and fix it when we notified them at the beginning of the pandemic, but it hasn't been maintained since then, there were never any contracts signed with the organizations that took on the um, maintenance and, and um, of the book boxes. Um, so it was never any sort of official um, agreement. Yeah, and, and for those of you that don't know about this project, it was probably, I think Allie and I dated it back to at least five years ago. And yeah, it, was it was from before lead. 2015 is what Deb said. Okay. It was a we lead project with Myra Ginge. Maybe you remember her last name that works at West Liberty State Bank. Reyes. Reyes. Okay. Oh, I was wrong, wasn't I, Allie? Reyes. So and was Deb. Nobody got her last name right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I don't think anybody ever signed a contract to maintain them. They just signed a con They just said, oh, sure, we'll paint one. Yeah. So it wasn't ever a maintenance thing. Mm -hmm. The maintenance thing, um, I think it was up in the air for a long time who the maintainer was. And then it fell upon the library for stocking the books. And then it fell upon anybody that could repair them to repair them because I know my hubby picked one up. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Mick, Mick, uh, he lives next to the middle school and his wife has Mama Bear's daycare. McLean. McLean. Yeah, Clinton. He did some maintenance on them. Also, um, let's see, a couple other people were available for maintenance. Um, and I, I guess I understand that their usefulness maybe isn't as 
good as it could be right now with just finishing. Well, I don't even know if we're finishing the pandemic. Um, so I, I don't know what needs to be done, but I, maybe I can say, yeah, did you talk to Myra at the bank? I have not yet. Okay. Um, I can say um, with certainty that we don't have the staffing levels or um, time to maintain some little free libraries outside of the library. We have enough of our own projects going on. Um, if this is something that the board would like to see continued, I would make the recommendation that we turn it over to the friends group um, and see if they can take over um, maintaining and organizing um, the maintenance of the of these little free libraries since they are in charge of the books that you know the books that are donated to the library tend to be donated directly to the friends so that we don't have to exchange any money in order for them to um, purchase city um, goods and materials um, so does it, anybody know of any libraries other than the one in mcferrin's yard around town anywhere I know there's a blessing box in at, at the Catholic Church, but that's all food and paper products. But I didn't know if anybody else in West Liberty has one. Is there one up by First Church? Yes, I believe is that there a is. Book box or is that a blessing box? That I don't know. No, it's 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 a little library. It's a book. Is it a little library? Because okay. mm -hmm. I, I, we wouldn't mind having one in our yard, but that's like two blocks from McFerrin's. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a, another location would be more beneficial than having two that close together. Plus, as since it was Myra's project, maybe Myra has an idea mm -hmm. of Does where to put it. To what? Does anyone have an idea how much they're actually utilized? During softball, baseball season, the one was at Dutton was used a lot, but during off season was, of course, the vandalizing time. And um, the other issue that Nick pointed out is that it was also causing him and his staff some grief as he said he can't imagine what was happening other than kids hitting the books with baseball bats in order to get the amount of pages scattered through Dutton that were. <laughs> well, um, I, I know the times I was there following ball games with kids, I saw kids get books out and read them. But I know, I also know that historically the one at Rendezvous has been the one that's most used because it's the most central one. Mm -hmm. And I guess another part of me just, and I, this idea just popped in my head. If the Rotary one is damaged and Rotary wants to, I mean, with Myra's blessing, maintain one maybe road maybe rendezvous park is the best location i don't know but at, at I that point honestly project and i was on the board work during this project somebody needs to decide i guess yeah and i think that it would need to be a conversation with rotary and parks um as opposed to with rotary and the library um Well, Myra needs to be in there somewhere. Because it was her we lead project. It was her leadership project. So I just need some guidance from the board as to how we want to handle this. Well, I guess talk to the Rotary and talk to Myra and see what their ideas, suggestions are. And maybe we talk about it again next month. Is this, is this Myra still in West Liberty? What, Allie? Yes. Okay. Father, we're talking about the little libraries that are posted around town. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, the damage that they're done, the Parks and Recreation Department doesn't want them in the parks anymore because they're just vandalized and and causing uh, trash <laughs> yes so i see um yeah and i'm more than welcome you know i'm 
more than happy to, again, and I think that this would be more of a friends issue than it would be um, a library issue, but to encourage individuals outside of um, the parks and things to ha maintain, have and maintain little free libraries. Um, and, you know, if it's in somebody's yard, they're more likely to take care of it a little more regularly than something in a park where they may or may not go on a regular basis. Um, and I think that the friends could offer, you know, for like a dollar to refill um, a, a book box and then that could be a fundraising thing that the friends do in order to also, you know, help free up some of our space um, in the friends room. Where have they been vandalized? Every park. There was one. There was there one at Friendship Park. There are six. Was the index one. There was one at Railroad Park. There was one at Kimberly Park. One at Rendezvous Park. One at Dutton. And and one at the library. So there were six original. What? There's one across the street from me, but I don't see it ever vandalized. It just gets blown down once in a while. Who has, whose yard is it in? The United First Church United. And that's a book box, or is that a blessings box? Box. No, it looks it's full of books. Yeah, it's a oh, okay. Well, that verified that. <laughs> we talked about that a little bit earlier. We weren't sure which kind it was. So if there's one at McFerrin's and there's one at First Church, um, those are a nice distance apart. And if there's one at the library, that's, and I bet it was purchased by the library to replace one. It has the Comets um, logo on it. Oh. I don't know where it was supposed to intended to go. Tim believes that it was intended to go to Kimberly, um, but he's not positive on that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I and and I don't know. Did who who did the comments part? Comments on it? Did did know. Nick? No. No. I didn't a group of kids or some people get together and and uh, paint them? It's very That's what tidily, I was thinking. Yeah, it's very tidily painted. So I think it might have been a stencil of some sort. Yeah, I know. Jacob painted the index one originally when he worked at the index. And the index one was destroyed in the derecho. Yeah, um, and Mike and I painted the lion's one originally. I on it. Um, the rotary one, I, I don't know whether it was uh, Cliff or Bill Colner or I don't know, or Donnelly that painted it originally. Uh, I know I personally painted the one that was in Dutton, um, just red, white, blue to go with the playground equipment. And I do not remember who painted the one at Rendezvous Park. So it was a project that was started by Myra and then people offered to paint them. And then I know Dorianne and Dennis, both former employees at some point took kids out and filled them. And then the Comet one, I, I don't know who painted that one. Do any of those, are any of those people interested in maintaining this? Maybe, you know, they would be interested in helping. When we first reached going. out to people regarding them at the beginning of the pandemic, because Sandy was concerned about people using the little free libraries with the, um, and how we didn't know how books were transmitting um, and holding um, the virus. Um, when we reached out to people, the index did express interest in it being, being maintained. However, they have not reached out since it was destroyed, um, nor did they fix it up after they were reached out to. Um, same with, I think, the other clubs. I know that the one at Dutton was destroyed beyond repair, um, and so Nick took it down. Um, and I believe that the one in Kimberly has been, had been missing for years. 
um, and the lion. Well, the one in Kimberly is the one that Mike had the door for. Right. So yeah. When it got destroyed, he doesn't know because he's he took the door off of it and got it repaired. But when it went missing, neither of us knew. So right. or or remember. Yeah. And so, but that's what Nick has told me is that it's been missing for years. And again, that nobody had reached out to us or um, I have no record of what was supposed to happen with these books beyond one mention of them in 2017 when they were, when the initial sponsorship was created. And again, there were no contracts signed um, and there was no uh, clear guidance as to what, whose obligation um, these boxes fell under. I know earlier, wasn't it last fall that the editor wrote a paper about the book box or article in the paper about the book boxes? Yes, I believe he misquoted you. Uh, it was B oh yeah, he misquoted me. But um, that was before the duratio though. Yes, that was before the duratio. So how, how should we proceed with this? Should we contact Myra and uh, maybe uh, Christy Hager, who's the president of Friends? Yep, I, I guess do. I guess that would be my suggestion because uh, Myra started the project, so that would be my suggestion. If, if it's been since before 2015, and she hasn't had reached out about any sort of maintenance regarding it, I my my viewpoint at that is that she's abandoned this project. Uh, but I have no problem in reaching out to her and asking her what's going on, and then um, contacting. Uh, Rotary since theirs is the only one that's still in existence. But like I said, Nick will not put up any new ones in the parks. Okay. Well, contact Myra and see what she says. Sounds right. perfect. And then, uh, you know, maybe we can figure out where to put the, I mean, there's no point in that one sitting there in the library with nobody using it. Mm -hmm. I think that that's if, something that the friends could look into, definitely. Yeah, or and if that could be used to replace the Rotary one, if Rotary wants to do that, you know, great. So, all right, well, that's the only thing that I have heard. And that just came about with plexiglass. Okay, thank you very much, Carly, yep. for bringing this up. So okay, well, okay. we had thought about. All right, okay. I'm gonna have to go pick up little Lucy here pretty soon. So I'll just listen for four more minutes. Okay, any more public discussion? We'll move on to the financial report. Any comments about it, Allie, or from any members? We are still doing pretty well with our overall spending. We're at 75% of the year. Um, I am still uh, working on reconciling our credit card statements. Um, there are a couple of things that I'm still trying to locate, but I need to clean my office. And so that's <laughs> what that is. <laughs> um, as soon as that done, our, is done, our record should be matched the city's. Um, I think that's it. We did receive um, a grant. Uh, I think I noted that in my director's report. Um, and I just got the go ahead to um, release information about it. It is the Piggy Barber um, programming grant. Tribute. tribute Piggy Barber grant. tribute grant. Specifically um, Lily applied program. for that one and we did receive it. It is $2,500 towards um, adult programming for the next six months. Um, we will be using that money for creating take and make projects for adults, um, as well as um, uh, adult programming in person as things get um, better. I'm more comfortable with adult programming in person um, if we do, you know, kind of limited sign up um, situations and stuff like that with the fact that adults can get vaccinated. And I think we'll have those open to anybody 16 and over. Um, because typically their older teens tend to be a little more interested in adult programs and um, younger um, kids programs. However, Lily has really great ideas. So I'm sure that we'll have to fight her for them. <laughs> well, uh, that is actually for 12 months as well. It That's is right, the sorry. whole fiscal year. 
Um, so that will help supplement our programming budget significantly. I think double it. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Excellent. Uh, we did also on. receive a donation of $1,000 from a woman in California or Oregon. And I got a letter with it. Um, Oregon. It says, Dear Ms. Parsmith, some 75 to 85 years ago, this library became an important part of the lives of three, uh, of three foster girls, and foster is capitalized, I believe that was their maiden name, um, from Adelissa. It enhanced our curiosity and became a big asset in, in improving our reading skills. We have many fond memories of time spent there. I am enclosing a contribution for you to use at your discretion, but hope that it might be directed to improving your collection used by young people or perhaps to upgrade access to online training and resources. We still borrow books, although access to libraries and other places are now limited, and without which our lives as retirees would be impossibly boring. I wish you well in your important endeavors. Sincerely, Genevieve Foster Lehman. So Very good. We are putting that $1,000 towards um, the summer reading program for children this year. Um, hopefully being able to reach some of those other little girls in Adelissa. <laughs> Very good. Great. Okay, anything else about the financial report? Do we have um, a motion to approve the financial report? So moved. Second? I'll second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Okay, the director's report. Okay, so um, uh, I am still looking at project management um, things and going to compile what we discussed in the closed session about goals uh, and goal setting um, into that. I've just discovered Asana which is a website um, that helps do that. There's a free version that seems to fit the needs of the library and we might be able to use it as a team, um, but we're kind of waiting for things to calm down a little bit before we explore that beyond just me. Um, uh, then um, the painting downstairs is completed. Um, uh, at the end of the meeting, if we'd like, I can switch over to my phone and take, we can take a little tour. Um, because we also now, as of today, the, all of the shelving that was, um, and has been initially installed. Um, so most of our um, new shelving has just arrived and been fully installed. Um, we're still waiting on the furniture and things like the countertops downstairs um, and the the dramatic play set that will be installed on a wall. So there are a couple of things that I feel like we will still need to keep the children's department closed until those things are installed because they'll just require a little bit more work. And uh, I don't want kids to get in the way of workers and to be at risk kind of thing. Um, but I believe that that should be done by the end of May barring any shipping delays. Um, my office is still too hot. <laughs> And so is the bathroom. The bathroom gets up to 90 degrees some days. Um, so it does feel like a little bit of a spa, um, but the soap's hot, which is weird. <laughs> um, so uh, Blaine is, uh, was at a um, conference last week. Um, I'm gonna text him and remind him um, to stop in sometime and see what's going on. Um, the friends group did meet. Um, we. Uh, have Christy Hager has been elected as president. Claire Palmer um, is vice president. However, she is not interested in maintaining that position. Um, Lynn Zeman will be treasurer. And then Kelsey Witten Smith decided to stay on as secretary. Um, hopefully we can do some recruiting. Um, and then I would also encourage any board members who are leaving at any point, um, you're more than welcome to join the friends. <laughs> and be active members. Um, we are currently cross-training some of our employees with the um, administrative department at the city. Um, Brittany is uh, working there and she will be working there starting in May at 20 hours a week. 
um, there and 20 hours a week here um, with, I believe, the intent for her to be a full-time employee at the, at the city. So we will need to start looking for a replacement for Brittany. Um, Jacob has started to help out with their social media and website maintenance with to aid with the communication aspect of the city. Um, personally, I think that that's going to be very good. <laughs> um, uh, Jacob has done such a wonderful job for us helping with the, those things. Um, we are, uh, when I discuss this with Ginge, we are going to discuss a little bit further once Lee is back from vacation and I am back from vacation to make sure that the hours are being paid for by the city that Jacob is putting in versus um, him working because he's currently being offered a stipend. Um, but uh, I know that Jacob's not interested in working more than 40 hours a week. Um, so it's gonna be a conversation that we'll have to have to make sure that we're not taking any time away from the library. Um, the state library finally updated their licensing program. So I'll uh, start working on that um, probably after summer reading um, for myself and um, other staff will be encouraged to complete the program within the year as well. Uh, we finally relabeled all of fiction and we've now moved it, I believe four times um, this week uh, because of all the shifting we've had to do for the new shelves, um, three times today. Um, <laughs> Uh, and we are continuing to receive materials for the racial justice grant. We did create a list on our uh, catalog. I put the link in there so people can see what materials we're receiving um, from that grant. Um, the charitable fund is up and running um, with the Community Foundation for Greater Muscatine, and we do have it linked on our website so people are able to go there um, and make donations. Um, and then we'll be discussing the summer reading program later today. Okay, very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, old biz or announcements from members. Um, I have something to say. I'm very sad. Um, but I will be moving out of the library's school district. And so I will have to leave. We are still gonna be very involved in West Liberty. My husband is still working in West Liberty and we're still maintaining um, um, my other board memberships with I'm able to maintain, but with the requirement to be within the school district, um, I have to give this one up. So I'm very sorry. Um, so I wanted to let you guys all know, I've had a really great time working with you. Please send me information about the friends <laughs> so I can maintain that at least. I had that thought and... after our conversation. <laughs> I was like, oh, she'd be perfect for the friends group. <laughs> yes. So yes, let me know how that goes. And then um, I will continue to be here while we still have our house. Um, we haven't listed it yet. And um, so I think until it's, I spoke with, uh, with Ginge and Allie until it goes or we find a replacement for me, um, I can stay on while I'm still a, a, a community member. Um, we still have it. I'm looking, um, trying to find a replacement. That's my goal is to be able to have one so you guys won't have to be worried, but uh, let me know <laughs> uh, if you have any other suggestions. But it has been a wonderful time being here and I wouldn't, uh, I didn't want to give it up if I didn't have to, so. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Adriana. We certainly appreciate your service and, and uh, we will miss you. Yes, you've been a wonderful asset. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, old business, the pandemic level review. Yes. So I think we're ready. Um, Good. <laughs> we have... Um, uh, all staff who has communicated to me about vaccinations has had at least one vaccine. Uh, the majority have had two. Um, I believe we're waiting on just one employee to be able to get their second. Um, and so we will all be fully vaccinated. So the two weeks after vaccination um, by May 13th, um, which I think is a Friday or a Thursday. 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 Um, uh, I am on vacation next week, so I do not, uh, will not be opening the library while I'm not here. Um, I don't think that's fair to the staff, but I do think that 
um, we can probably make things work to open um, on the third at the earliest. Um, but, you know, I would prefer that the 16th um, or any time in between those two dates. Well, don't let me push you, but I'm going for the third. <laughs> Um, with the one staff member, I think we can make do um, if they're not comfortable um, working at, at a full capacity. Um, yeah. So if we wanted to open up at the third, um, we can. Any comments? The third sounds good to me. Uh, is that a motion? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second that. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the motion passed, May 3rd. Great, we will move to level four. Um, and again, I listed the um, what that looks like in the notes. Um, we'll have to play the, the lower level by ear, but it'll definitely be the upper level open. Um, and we will just, because of the staffing levels, it's difficult to count the number of people who come in and make sure that how long they've been here, we just wouldn't be able to enforce that fairly. So we're just going to be dispersing groups of 10 or more. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, in, interim vice president. I, I have a question about this, Allie. Mm -hmm. Why is this an appointment rather than an election? It might be an election. I just used a word. Oh. We can call it an election. Because I think um, with an election, you have to have, let me pull up the bylaws. Because I think it did reference it being an appointment for the rest of a term. Okay, so this is this is an appointment just to fill out her term, fill mm -hmm. out the term. When will that term be up? March, next March. Next March. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is an election, sorry. And okay. the election officer resigns, which is what this would be, an election to fill the unexpired term will be held at the next regular meeting. So do we have a nomination for a vice president? I talked to Ali yesterday and I would like to not be considered. I've got enough dealing with the city right now. I believe that that leaves us with either Father Martin or Araceli. <laughs> To be fair, vice president doesn't have to step in unless the president is uh, in incapacitated in some regard. And I'm very healthy. Very healthy. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm not experienced <laughs> enough or like gone to enough meetings to really know. <laughs> Father Martin, would you be willing to be vice president until next March? Well. I, I certainly would not be president if, if that's a succession thing. Yes, that would not be the succession plan. We will appoint somebody at that time, um, at which point we might have to train Araceli up and wrap up the issues with the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd step in until next March, but um, I, I can't be doing, I, I just got too many things to do. Absolutely. I, I can't do the, the, the president. Yeah. Okay. That is fine. It's not a succession thing. No. Um, no. You wouldn't be taking over for Ginger in October. We'll have to have a separate election for that. Okay. Do we have a nomination then? Come on, our Sally. If you don't want the job, then nominate father. You can, you can nominate father. <laughs> I nominate father. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there a second? I can second. Sorry, okay. Father. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Opposed? All right, Father, you have a new title. <laughs> okay, uh, new business, summer reading. Yes, it didn't include an action sheet because this is mostly Lily's, Lily's starring moment. Oh, I thank you. Well, I'm just gonna uh, throw it back old school and share a PowerPoint with y'all. <laughs> just a moment. <laughs> I know why Larry's not here. I know. <laughs> it's okay. We could have nominated him. He wasn't we could here. Appoint him as president <laughs> leader. <laughs> Maybe he read the agenda too closely. <laughs> okay, so the theme for this year is reading colors your world, and there's a lot of great artwork and wonderful ideas to go with it. So. We're looking at doing an eight week summer program. Um, that's what a lot of other libraries in Iowa do if they're able to, it is a little bit longer, but so we're looking at June 7th after school ends through July 31st. So for program layout, we're um, gonna do upon registration, they get their, their summer reading program sheet. For the kiddos, that's going to be a game card. For our little kiddos, that'll be a game card with 20 prompts on it. It sounds like a lot when you think of babies and toddlers and things, but some of them are like sing a song or go for a walk and talk about what you see. So a lot of those. And then upon finishing that, we're going to have a variety of board books and picture books um, sponsored by the banks, um, giving us some funding to purchase those. Um, and then for some of those older uh, four-year-olds and even some really high-level three-year-olds, sometimes the parents ask if they, if they don't want like the really easy one. So they can opt, feel free to opt in to our, our next level, which is for kids, elementary school, K through fifth. Um, a lot of theirs, since it's Reading Colors Your World, we're getting plenty of just little crayon packets so they can all take those home along with some activity sheets like we did last year. Um, this one's gonna be a bingo sheet and it's gonna be 24 prompts. For the first level, they just have to get bingo. They, get, they can use that free spot. They can do pretty much four prompts if they want. Um, and then we'll have a choice of either coupons or um, lots of toys, puppets, slime, whatever. Um, and then for that, if they wanna do a blackout on the bingo card and just do all of the bingo card, then they can come in and get a summer reading t-shirt that Hills Bank is providing us, um, a book, and we'll have some grand prize options. Um, so that's what these are gonna look like. We're changing out some of the prompts and then we're editing this lovely crayon game card to instead of read each book on the square, we're gonna fill those in with the small prompts. The state provided these um, with beautiful artwork. So thought we'd keep it simple and just edit them. Okay. Which is also nice since other libraries in the community, in different communities will look similar, um, but be ever so slightly different tailored to each community. Mm -hmm. That way if somebody is participating in more than one, like, you know, grandkids are here for a period of time and happen to live like over in Solon, they might be using the same um, format. Exactly. And something that I like to focus on, it depends on the library and it depends on the librarian, but, um, and I really like to have prompts that aren't just reading. I wanna make sure kid, kiddos that don't like reading, they can still complete the entire reading program um, with do, still doing some reading, but also just participating in the library and in our community. So um, I like some of these, we have just write a letter to someone or we're gonna be switching some of these out for West Liberty specific ones like watch Canopy, like use our new Canopy streaming service, which has a kids feature and things like that. For our teens, which will be sixth grade and up, um, they'll get colored pencils instead of crayons, I suppose. Um, and it'll be 24 prompts. We haven't um, completely decided on the format for this one. We're either gonna do a bingo card or we're hoping to do a color by number with the prompts, but we're working on that now. And if it gets done in time, it'll be that one. Um, so they'll do a half and half. If they do half the prompts, prompts they get uh, their level one prize. And if they do all the prompts, then they can come get their t-shirt and book. And just like Allie mentioned, our older teens, if they aren't 
If this isn't speaking to them, they're welcome to sign up for our adult reading program instead. And they can go to either of those programs as well. Um, let's see here. As for programming, I know that you guys mentioned some in-person programming that we wanted. So we will be doing weekly story times in Rendezvous Park. I've got, I'm talking, we still have to talk with Nick and get those all scheduled and everything. So we're hoping for Rendezvous. We'll keep you guys updated on that. And then we're gonna do a June drop-in program and a July drop-in program for each age group. Um, and then we're thinking of that as a longer one then. So instead of having like an hour program and then having all the kids come, it'll just be a drop-in program for more like three hours. Um, and then we'll also do, we're, Rebecca has been awesome about helping me with some bilingual story time. So we're gonna keep filming some of those to upload to our social media. And we're gonna have weekly take and make kits for that entire eight weeks. Um, so there will be 20 to 25 kits for kids each week and 20 to 25 for that sixth grade and up. And some of those are gonna look like this. So up here, we've got salt paint, salt and ice painting with the kids. It's gonna be super fun. I found fidget spinners made from skate, like ball bearings. So all sorts of neat things. These are microwaved candles for the teens. I, it is very safe. They only microwave them for about a minute and it's enough. And then they just let them sit. Um, for the kiddos, we've got junk drawer robots. And for in-person, we're gonna do seed bombs down here. So they'll get to mix the soil and the mud and the seeds and be really hands-on out in our library lawn. And the teens, I love this uh, broken art, broken crayon art, um, which comes with like, there's tons of suggestions. So it was great to make a program out of that. Then for outside of the specific programming and our summer reading sheet, um, to get, it seems like we still need, we're, when we reopen, we, we need to connect with our community again and as we keep doing that. So we'll have passive activities available here at the library too to encourage them to come in and see us. Um, so things like guessing jars or guess how many Legos it took to build this. Um, we also, from my last library, I took this one, library search and finds. They're very short. They have a few prompts and questions depending on the age group and it helps them explore the library, see where these types of books are, let's, you know, how to use resources, gets you chatting with librarians. And if um, we've rearranged, it'll help reorient where everything is. Yes. And it's like a, it's a little scavenger hunt for them in the library. <laughs> Um, and then Re Rebecca and Brittany are going to be helping me make some book lists and bookmarks for all sorts of different types of readers and ages. And then encouraging engagement with displays. Like we just did a poetry month display that Rebecca helped me with. And it looks like a tree with all the leaves. And so things like here, take a poem, or do you want to write your own poem and stick it up there? Things like that. And the last thing I've got is we will also have volunteer opportunities for our high schoolers for Silver Cord. I only have one teen volunteer right now that comes in masked up and we relabel books together, but I don't think we'll be banging down the doors for a whole bunch. But the one that I'm really excited about is actually Color a Smile. So they'll be able to just spend their summer coloring if they want. It'll be completed as a prompt on their reading program and then we send them into this agency and they deliver them to all sorts of folks across the country whether they're in supported living homes or if they're veterans veterans across seas or wherever whoever might need a smile they send these so that's kind of a neat one but it counts towards their silver cord volunteer hours um, and then I forgot a slide actually sorry about that we'll just look at these cute crafts um, uh, the some of the sponsors we talked about the banks, but those coupons that I mentioned, we've already got some. We've got a hundred from the Blank Park Zoo coming in. We've got some from local businesses in Iowa City, like Molly's Cupcakes. Some in Muscatine, like um, the movie theater there, gave us some movie passes. And then we're going to be using a little bit of our summer reading program money from funders and sp or from sponsors to buy coupons and gift certificates within West Liberty. Um, I know Allie and I talked about maybe it's a hard year for 
small businesses, not the large chains, which is mainly who I asked to give us, to ask to donate um, coupons. Um, so we were hoping to maybe purchase them from our local businesses and help boost that. So uh, yeah, but if you guys have any questions or anything or suggestions, comments. Yeah, and then I'll chime in real quick with the adult summer reading program. Um, we're going to be doing, um, uh, it's just going to be reading six books. Um, they can be whatever format, audio, um, physical, ebooks. Um, and it'll probably be a bookmark situation. Um, people can turn in one for a grand prize and then um, every subsequent uh, bookmark turned in will be entered in for a, um, an alternative prize. Because um, I want to make sure that, there's, that we're rewarding people for reading, period. Um, and, um, but, you know, giving an extra option for those who want to read above and beyond. Very good. Looks, sounds like there's been a lot of planning done. Mm -hmm. This looks really good. Yeah, this looks awesome. Have you reached out to Stephanie Martin to see if there's anything with like chamber bucks or anything the chamber would be interested we in? We did that last year with as prizes okay. for chamber bucks. Um, I'm hoping for the adults to put together some like, um, like evenings out as prizes. Um, mm -hmm. I like to do, um, I often find with myself, I have enough stuff. I don't need to win prizes that are stuff. Um, and so I like to try to give experiences, um, which is hard at the moment, but um, we're gonna look into some options. Um, I'm planning on getting in touch with, um, I'll probably try to get in touch with the state fair um, and, you know, Deb over at the um, Strand um, and look at some options there. But Chamber Bucks were one of our most popular prizes last year for kids. <laughs> they were very excited to get $50 in Chamber Bucks. Uh, <laughs> perfect. And passes to the Muscatine County Fair. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to say for our county fair, but our summer reading program will still be going on when our fair is occurring. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and maybe that's something that we can plan for next year. Uh, it just wasn't on my mind because um, I haven't gotten to experience a fair yet. <laughs> when you have information on how to sign up and get everybody registered, um, let me know. We can get that to, we like to sign up all of our dream catcher kids. Mm -hmm. So oh, wonderful. Um, yeah. Jacob and I were just talking about putting together a short video. Um, normally I would go to classrooms and talk to kids mm -hmm. in the schools. Um, but I'm sure that teachers have enough going on right now. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking about just sending them a short video so I can send you that over to you as well. And Perfect. I think registration is yeah. going to be pretty simple. Well, uh, I know we have to check if Hallie and Jacob and I asked chat whether we're doing any sort of online or just in person, but thank you, Adriana. Yes. Love to have all yeah. your dream catchers. Yes. If you can get it before the end of the school year, we can do it during our actual mentoring meetings. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Look at the beginning of May here. Perfect. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Okay, next item is reviewing the circulation policy. Yeah, so our circulation policy was really long, nine pages. Um, so I started to divide it up. Um, I have the other aspects planned. The staff and I kind of had an impromptu, full-time staff and I had an impromptu meeting to kind of come up with um, how things would work best for us. Um, on the changes that need to be made and things that need to be clarified. So this first part um, is the library account policy. There were a couple of other aspects of COHA that I need to look into for the actual circulation part of this policy. Um, but this will clarify with our library account policy. We wanted to click, start using the term account instead of card since we don't really have physical cards. Um, we didn't wanna create any confusion for new um, community members who weren't, haven't been here since before there were cards. Um, so we are requiring um, signatures uh, and proof of identification and address um, for uh, applicants 15 years old and younger. So it's basically as soon as you can get your, um, your driver's license, um, you can get a library card on your own. Um, 
we do, I do clarify in here that uh, along with state law um, that the patrons are um, that, let's see, it's the individual or institution whose name is on an account is responsible for the materials checked out on that account or in the case of an unemancipated minor under the age of 18, the legal guardian of the patron. Um, that's something that wasn't in our previous one. Um, the idea being that um, parents are responsible for their ki the kids' materials, um, monetarily responsible if something is lost or gone missing, despite the fact that we can't tell them what's on their account until it is lost or missing. <laughs> um, and that's just to respect that privacy of all of our patrons. Um, and so I'm hoping that we, that Jacob and I can come up with some sort of shortened bookmark type thing that we can give out when we're um, creating accounts so that people have that as a reference. Um, and that we'll, we'll kind of come up with a spiel that we go through um, for signing people up for library cards so that that's all upfront and honest um, so that nobody is surprised when suddenly they're finding out that they have to pay for something that their kid broke. Um, we are creating a temporary library account. Um, this was kind of um, brought up with the idea that we do have some grandchildren who come and stay with grandparents for the summer. Um, and a lot of times they're just told to just tell the library staff to use grandma or grandpa's card or account, but that's, it, it enters into this gray area of not, we wanna use whoever's account is the one we are talking to. Um, and so that we know that that person is the person who is, is being held responsible for the materials, um, but that we would be able to link grandma and grandpa's account or a local resident's account to that uh, temporary account for the period of time in which they are here. Um, so it gives a little bit more freedom um, and that way we don't have to say no if there happens to be a new person who doesn't know who their grandparents are. Um, like myself. <laughs> um, this also gives us the opportunity for any individuals who are uh, transient um, or um, homeless for any period of time, as long as they have somebody who has a physical address and phone call, phone number um, that we can get in touch with so that we can get in touch with that individual. Um, we can get them signed up for a temporary card. Um, there won't be any renewals and the card will expire or the uh, account will expire after eight weeks. Um, after eight weeks, if they're still hanging around, we can talk to them about creating either a longer term card or extending their temporary card. Um, we also did discuss the online account registration, which we created during the pandemic. Um, the idea is that within um, a month of registration, they have to come in and, and show us their ID and, and um, proof of address in order to um, create or have their account continue on beyond that one month. Okay, very good. Um, I have a comment about the first sentence. Yeah. On policy purpose. All patrons may have access to library materials while in the building. Uh, they don't have to be a patron, do they? No, they don't. Okay. So I can change that to individual. Yeah. Uh, and then you realize you have an extra word. Do I? One, two, three, the fourth paragraph at the very end under account application. Oh, I started a sentence that I didn't finish. I just want you to know that I read these. I appreciate it, Ginge. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I put those things in there. It's so that I it's just, a, it's a secret test to make sure you're all reading them. Change passes. I'm sure everybody else caught it too. Mm -hmm. we, I thought it was we, part we, of the next sentence. <laughs> it was just a long phase. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to get over being an English teacher. I love it. It's so helpful. <laughs> Okay, uh, Allie's recommendation is that we uh, approve this. Is anyone? Oh, I will say another one of the things that we did update in this is to make sure to 
uh, create some sort of schedule for um, removal of accounts. So if there's somebody who is inactive for five years, whether or not they have things still on their account, we're just going to delete their account. We're not going to see those things again after five years of them being missing. And in that five years, we probably will have either replaced it or have decided not to replace it. Um, and that gives the opportunity if like somebody goes away to college, doesn't use the library for five years, used to have tons of fines, moves back to town and is a changed person, they can start with a clean slate. <laughs> okay. One question with the temporary, um, mm -hmm. I understand the not allowing renewals. Um, if but since you were you mentioned it with people who have like kids that might be visiting during the summers, would they then be able to the next summer be allowed or if they read You'd this? Probably need to sign them up again. Um, mm -hmm. They'll probably still like an expired card will live in our system for that five years. And so what we can do is just renew the card when they come back. Okay. I figured, but I just wanted to make sure that there was a, a process. Yes. Okay. Um, I motion to approve. Is that is that what you're looking for? Yep. A second. I'll second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion is approved. And, uh, uh, opposed. <laughs> All right. The motion is passed. Wonderful. Okay. Well, on um, to the bookmobile. Yes. I'm very excited. Um, so uh, this is the proposal, attaches the proposal for the Antelope Lending Library um, partnership with the West Liberty Public Library. Um, Kathy Elton uh, is the director of the Antelope Lending Library, has been since its inception in 2012. 12, she is the founder. Um, Kathy is a good friend of mine. We used to work together at Coralville, um, and she's currently the uh, library, uh, the children's librarian at Solon. Um, they are focused on reaching populations that have difficulties getting to libraries um, and helping out libraries who have those populations that they can't reach without making a huge investment in a bookmobile or some other sort of major kind of infrastructure. Um, this is way less than I was anticipating. <laughs> um, the cost being, I was anticipating something around $5,000 to $7,000. Um, she keeps the cost pretty low. They only charge what they need. They don't add any extra. Um, and they are billed at the end of the season. So that way, if there's any um, stops or um, events that have to be canceled for various reasons, be it staffing issues or weather events, um, we wouldn't get charged for that. Um, this is something that we identified as a goal to get uh, um, service out to Adelissa and Nichols. I did clarify with Cassie, it would be one hour at each location um, for a total of two hours with travel. Um, and you say one hour at each location at, at the location. Mm -hmm. So it would be one hour in Adelissa and one hour in Nichols. I would anticipate that that would be on the same day because we don't want to have to pay for them to come out a second day. Um, nor do I think we can spare um, that Cassie could probably spare the staff. I know that they are low as well. We can change the time if you want more time. Yes. And <laughs> so Lily also works for Antelope. Um, so uh, they will also be you know, potentially going as either in their capacity as <laughs> children's librarian or as the driver of the bookmobile. Um, <laughs> exactly, we got to get our people, get to see our people. Um, so yeah, it'd be one hour at each location. Um, usually for summer programs, they do a weekly service. She has created this proposal with a month, with just a monthly service in mind. I think that that's probably the best way for us to start since this is new um, and just to see like how things work, um, if we get kind of the dates right um, and things like that. And then we can um, 
budget for it in future if it's something we would like to increase the, num the amount of service during the summer next year. Um, we can do that. How do they figure out which hour they'll, they'll be there? That would be a decision that we would discuss probably with Adalisa and Nichols. Um, I'd want to have a conversation with them about it because obviously a lot of bookmobile services tend to be geared towards children. Um, so during the summer, obviously children are more available during the day, um, but we're going to probably be looking at that prime four o'clock, five o'clock hour for hitting kids getting home from school because they have to be bused. Um, and then um, it hopefully hitting some adults um, after, oh, thank you. Um, hitting some adults after um, they commute home. Um, but we also don't want to have to have the bookmobile out super late because this is through, you know, June through December. Um, the bookmobile does have Wi-Fi services available and it is heated on the inside. Um, the idea would be that people would be able to sign up for cards with Antelope. They have their own small collection on the bookmobile, but we would also deliver any holds um, and send some of our, you know, some popular titles um, picked out to um, the location with ours. And since they have um, uh, Wi-Fi, we'd be able to connect to our system and get people checked out and registered for a card or for accounts and things like that. We'd also hopefully be doing certain amounts of programming, a lot of that type of drop in where it's, you know, show up and do a small craft for a short period of time or have a short story time. Um, and um, potentially have, I can't think, I haven't had a chance to think of what to do for adults if we do any adult programming with the bookmobile, but I'm sure I can come up with something. Uh, as for funding, um, we're going to apply for the, some of the impact grants. Um, I'm concerned that the West Liberty Foundation wouldn't fund this because it is for Adalissa and Nichols and not for West Liberty. Um, but I don't know if they express, you know, I don't know if that's part of their mission, serving the school district versus serving the city. Um, However, I think that there are other grants that we can look at. And I know that the friends would be able to cover this amount if we didn't get any grant funding. Um, and I talked to Christy about it and she says that that's something that they would probably be interested in helping out with. Um, we'd be able to cover that for that six months. Um, we would then, my intent originally had been to seek out money from the Ryan Memorial um, for this, but since they give out larger amounts of money than what this requires, um, we could uh, instead look at using the Ryan Memorial funds to fund the capital improvement plan um, project. So the um, uh, either either the roof or the landscaping or both, um, helping work towards both, and then um, we that would free up money from the reserve fund that could be used to fund the next six months of bookmobile service. After which we would have it budgeted in the fiscal year. Um, for fiscal year 2022, uh, nope, 2023. Okay, does any discussion? Well, I would feel very good about having this service in Atlas and Nichols, yeah. particularly since we asked them for more money. Yes, and this is, they this is what this us. money will go for, will help and, <laughs> Um, and we will be asking for more money next yes, year so. so that we can continue to offer the service. Right, um, right. Yeah. And as far as I know, I don't need a motion on this since we identified this as a goal. Um, this is just kind of informative and um, letting you know how much this is going to cost. If you guys had any other ideas as to how it should be um, worked. So I think I can move forward with this. It's just a matter of us finding the funding. Um, the uh, only thing is obviously if funding falls through with anything, then we are left holding the bill. Um, so it's something that we'll have to look at, but I do think that we will be able to find funding, especially if we aim this at children. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, thank you for all your planning. Did you have a question, Adriana? <clears throat> I was just going to ask, 
are you doing the two antelope provided staff or we're going to do one? the one antelope one west liberty staff okay um so lily does get paid more for by antelope than they do by us um so uh i am reluctant to ask them to be the one west liberty staff um just because that's not entirely fair um and, but however, I would like to go down on a semi-regular basis. And I think also mm -hmm. sending Rebecca down on a semi-regular basis to help touch base with some of the bilingual um, and Spanish speaking um, residents of Adelissa and Nichols would be helpful. I think that's an excellent idea so that mm -hmm. more of the community gets to know you and the, exactly. and the staff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. So I think it'll probably vacillate between me and Rebecca um, yeah. primarily. Perfect. All right. Is there anything else? Allie, have you ever talked to Ken Wright about a handrail? I haven't yet. Um, with all of the renovations going on, I haven't been able to uh, talk about that. But I have that email you sent me with his contact information. Um, I'll make a note of that to get in touch when I get back from vacation. Anything else? Next on the agenda is adjournment. I move we adjourn. I didn't think I'd have to wait for you. <laughs> <laughs> is there a second? I can second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs>